Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you're tuning in today. Uh, we have begun Lent. The, the repentance has begun, if you will. Uh, you know, something that is, is interesting about this time of season is that so much of the season of Lent sometimes focuses on me as an individual, that we maybe lose what it should be about as a bigger view of what God is doing. Um, you know, the tendency, maybe because of living in our postmodern world, is for us to focus on ourselves um, instead of the bigger things of what God is doing and what we're a part of. So our individual repentance is a part of the season of Lent, but there's there's also bigger things happening. And uh, it's, it's maybe important for us to consider that sometimes. But uh, let, let's make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. If you pull out the YouVersion Bible app, our verse of the day is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore be imitators of God, as beloved children, and walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Well, there's there's a number of things we can get at right away in this text. Um, there's there's this relationship that's the focal point. It's the relationship between God and man. As I just said, we could maybe think individually, but the point of what Paul is doing is to get us to look outside of ourselves to the bigger scope of what he's doing. And then there's this imitating of him and that and the motive that prompts us to do that. Be God's imitators as beloved children. Now, this word here in Greek is technon, which is this, a simple word for, for children in general. And as being born of God, he's our father. So there's this language of father, son, God, children that's kind of flowing interchangeably. Well, the word itself conveys this dearness. Sons, you know, is also something you can extend to all children, but it con it connotates this idea of standing and what you get as benefits from your parents as children. But children is also excellently proper right here because children are naturally imitators of their parents. The things that they say, the actions that they do, then the children take up those behaviors. Your, my children have learned English because we speak English at home. They've learned to clear their plate after dinner because that's what we say and do. So here, our father talks about, we're learning about the love of God and the love of Christ but beloved makes evident our the normalcy of this. And we start to see that it's normal to do this because God does this to us. And so then we, in turn, do it because it's natural. It's natural for us to do this because we're so exposed to it. This word beloved strikes, strikes the note of this paragraph. Our love is to imitate God's love. So at this point, we must recognize that Paul's concern in this passage lies not with the individual Christian. It's broader than that. It's the collective doing this. The gospel is diminished if it leads the Christian to care only for themselves. As the book of Ephesians all the way through has stressed, it stressed the unity of the people in Christ through this reconciliation. Well, you might say, what kind of reconciliation do they need? Well, 
Jews and Gentiles were coming to worship together. This known divide for a very long period of time. And so that's why there's this persistent metaphor that Paul uses that we are one body in Christ. And so if Paul is speaking to political, social, economic, and religious divisions, that's the divisions between Jew and Gentile here. I mean, name it. It's there. There is so much tension between Jews and Gentiles. You could say, we as a church should consider how we as parts of the body seek to have unity in this kind of love in the political spectrum, in how we use or don't use our money, in what songs we do or don't sing, what programs we do or don't provide, how we choose to use or not use the property. All of this actually comes as encouragement from this text to seek the good of the Christian community as well as the individuals, of course. But it's so exciting to see that we're not unique in this regard. We want to think that we have new problems that the church has never seen before. But it's not really that new. And so that's encouraging in a sense that the gospel can prevail, that God's love can prevail. And so our goal then is to pray that we would tenderly seek out to do our part and that others would do the same for the unity of our community. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you have given us a most excellent example of your love in your Son's sacrifice and offering on our behalf. Seeing this, studying this, learning from this, we pray that you would soften our hearts to seek this unity in our local congregation for the joy of your kingdom being proclaimed and to the glory of your name. We pray all this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, have a blessed day in the Lord, and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.